Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is the rationality of war. And this actually kicks off a new unit where we're actually talking about bargaining and warfare. And throughout this unit, we're going to be asking the following question. Why do states fight costly wars? Now, this is also the topic of my most recent book, The Rationality of War, which is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can check out the video description and that will link you to those pages. Now, that shameless self-promotion aside, let's get to it. And I actually want to start out by looking at a parallel to war, a lawsuit. So imagine that a man trips and falls in your store and sues you for negligence. Well, your attorney and his attorney agree on the following things. First of all, there's a 60% chance the lawsuit will be successful. The reason that this is probabilistic is that we don't know the composition of the jury or the judge, and depending upon those things, the lawsuit could break either way. Second, if he wins, you have to pay him $40,000. If he loses, you don't have to pay him anything. And then finally, going to court will cost each of you $10,000 in lawyer's fees regardless of how the trial ends. So there are three possible resolutions here. First of all, either you or him could concede immediately. Second, you could reach an out-of-court settlement where you pay him some amount of money and then the lawsuit goes away. Or third, you could let the court decide the matter. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. How should we expect this matter to actually be resolved? One, two, or three. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to go to the comments section and go ahead and either write one, two, or three, and perhaps a brief explanation for why you think that is the most like re likely resolution. And if you've done that, then let's actually get to answering that question. So to start out, I want to look at what happens if you let the court decide the matter. Well, your expected payoff here is negative $40,000, the amount that you have to pay if you lose, times the probability you lose, which is 60%. Minus $10,000, and that comes out to negative $34,000. So your expected payoff for going to court is to lose $34,000. Now his expected payoff is $40,000 times 60%. The $40,000 is how much he makes if he wins the case. 60% is the probability that he wins the case. And then the $10,000 is the attorney's fees that he has to pay regardless. And that leaves him with hit an expected payoff of $14,000. So he actually expects to make some positive amount here if he goes to court. Now compare these outcomes to what happens if either of you concede immediately. This one isn't really going to make sense. Here's why. If you concede, you lose $40,000. That's worse for you than if you just went to court and lost $34,000 in expectation. And if he concedes, he receives nothing, which is again worse for him than going to court and winning $14,000 in expectation. So each of you would rather go to court than concede. It doesn't make sense for either of you to concede. So we can eliminate one from a possibility. And that leaves us with just two and three remaining. Now what's interesting is that this going to court option is equally silly. Why is that the case? Well, consider what happens if you look at an out of court settlement. A settlement X is better for you than going to court if X is less than $34,000. That's because you have to pay him $34,000 if you go to court, so you'd be happy to pay him less than $34,000 and avoid that courtroom. Now for him, a settlement X is better for him than going to court if X is greater than $14,000. Remember, he expects to make $14,000 if he goes to court. So if there's an out-of-court settlement that gives him at least $14,000 or more than $14,000, that's better for him than going to court. Now, therefore, that means any settlement offer between $14,000 and $34,000 is better for both parties than going to court. And that gives us a $20,000 range that we can bargain over. Any of those dollar values, if we agree to that settlement, is better for both of us than going to court. It would therefore be really, really weird if we went to court because we could come up with a settlement that actually makes us both better off. So the conclusion here is that settlement should be the result. But note that this is just like war. War produces a winner and a loser, perhaps probabilistically, and fighting is costly because it kills people and destroys things. So why can't two states settle, mat settle matters off of the battlefield? Why do they end up in war anyway? Well, we call such an explanation for why states end up in a war a rationalist explanation for war. And that's what we'll be dealing with in this unit. And to outline the rest of the unit, well, part one of this unit is going to deal with the research question, which we started here. We're gonna, in the next video, we're going to talk about the assumptions of the research question. And then the second part of that will actually get us to the research question itself, which is wars and efficiency puzzle, which is basically asking if there are these settlements that we all like better than going to war, why can't we get to them? And there's three different interpretations, an algebraic, a geometric, and a game theoretic approach. And we're going to look at all three of those. And then in the second half of the unit, we're going to actually look at the answers. So we're going to talk about preventative war, 
We're going to talk about asymmetric information and incentives to misrepresent. We're going to talk about issue indivisibility, and we're going to talk about preemptive war, which is different than preventive war. Please never think that those two things are synonymous. That would make me really happy. Now that actually wraps up this video, and in the next video we'll start getting to these explanations for war, first by looking at the assumptions of the model that we're looking at. Join me then.